Good afternoon. Thank you, David. Well, it is certainly my professional honor and my personal privilege to have been asked to introduce and present this award to the judge. Any opportunity I get to return to Chicago, I immediately leap at. And my wife, Ricky, a native of this uh, wonderful city, Northside girl, uh, Northwestern graduate, that I've had the opportunity growing up in Boston, known for its history, working in New York, known uh, for certainly all the things that New York is famous for, more recently working in Los Angeles, known for its weather. But this city uh, is arguably uh, the most beautiful in America, and one that I love coming back to time and again. And so when the judge called and asked that I uh, uh, come out and introduce him, I immediately leapt at the opportunity. Known for his probity that uh, he reached out to somebody not from here with the idea that uh, uh, he did not expect that I would ever have the opportunity to appear before him in his court in any form, defense, defendant, or whatever. And I'm, uh, uh, hopefully that is the case. The Judge and I first met in 1999. Uh, he and my wife, Ricky, for a number of years had participated in a uh, uh, prosecution training course here in Chicago, sponsored by Northwestern. And it's a uh, multi-day course. And I would accompany Ricky to it. And at the dinners that usually accompany the event, uh, she would make a beeline to be sure that she sat beside him at the table. Because in addition to uh, being one of the foremost jurists in this uh, uh, country, He's also a great dinner table companion. Uh, he is great to talk with. He's knowledgeable about so many things, whether it's the law, whether it's sports, whether it's the latest books. Uh, he's, he, he's a renaissance man. He, he basically is a man for all season in many respects. And I enjoyed uh, largely listening uh, to him as he and Ricky would engage in conversation. Uh, even known for his uh, uh, clothing splendor for a period of time that uh, if you wanted to know where the best place was to get good shirts, uh, he'd be able to tell you. Uh, Trent, Bill, and Asher in London for a period of time, but uh, we're both falling on hot of time, so both of us are wearing Brooks Brothers shirts today, no longer custom-made shirts from London. My role is to present to you the credentials, the civic achievement that he is being uh, honored for today. And so I'm going to take the liberty of, since there was not in the, uh, the booklet that was passed out to you, to emphasize those points in his career that you, the public, have benefited from, and he certainly, professionally and personally, feels uh, the best about. The opportunity for 47 years to have served the public. He could have gone out and made millions in the outside world, undoubtedly, but his passion was for the law. His passion was to do good. His life of significance, his life that matters, has meant a great deal to you and to this city and to this country. He first began his career after graduating from uh, Harvard Law School, but also attending in his undergraduate the uh, University of Chicago. He was an assistant state's attorney in Cook County starting in 1965, assistant attorney general for the state of Illinois beginning 1969. He was a deputy chief of the criminal justice division and then chief of the criminal justice division here in the 70s. He was the chief prosecuting attorney for the Illinois Judicial Inquiry Board. He's the executive director of the Illinois Law Enforcement Commission, director of the Department of Revenue, State of Illinois, and one that he is uh, really most proud of. For six years, he had, as he would describe it, the privilege of leading the Illinois State Police. The idea that in those six years that he was able to bring great reform to that organization, an organization that he loved dearly. And as an indicator of his success, he survived for six years in that position. The average tenure is three years for a chief of police. So Gary, hope for six, but uh, basically maybe count on three. And uh, I've uh, pretty much uh, bounced around a lot, but he really is passionate about that role. In February 1987, he was appointed to the United States District Court for the North District of Illinois by President Reagan. He also uh, concurrently serves on the United States Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. It basically authorizes the various uh, counterterrorism wiretaps that are needed from time to time. He is also, as you will very familiar this audience, has presided over several well-known trials, including the two trials for former Governor. I'm going to have to just uh, uh, re refer to him as Governor Blago because I can't never pronounce his name. So Governor Blago, 
now serving 14 well-deserved years in state prison. The Family Secrets case, the organized crime defendants responsible for 19 murders in this community. William Cellini, the political insider who was recently convicted. And one of the uh, two Tony Vesco trials, another political insider. Judge Zagel is, uh, as I mentioned, a man for all seasons, a renaissance man. He's appeared in movies. He's written a book. Uh, he tells me he has another book in front of a publisher at the moment. In the late 80s and early 90s, he played a grieving son in David Mamet's Homicide in a judge in the music box. In 2002, he wrote a fictional tale about a plot to rob the Federal Reserve called Money to Burn. I don't know when he finds time to do all of these things. That uh, He's a man for all seasons, but he's obviously a man that works 24 hours a day. This organization deserves credit for giving this Civic Achievement Award to the judge. He would be the first to tell you that he really doubts that judges should receive these awards, that the uh, credit really goes, in his case, in the courtroom uh, to the police, the prosecutors, and the members of the defense bar who are responsible for 95% of what goes on in those courts. His role is mainly to ensure that they do the right thing throughout those trial processes and to basically make sure that they don't screw up. He believes in always uh, going where the truth takes you for all the right reasons. He is a man who is passionate about the Constitution, that you don't break the law to enforce the law under any circumstance. He's a man who's passionate about consistency in the courts, white or black, rich or poor, that you appear in his court or appear in any court in this land, and there needs to be an equality of treatment and a fairness. He is passionate about the issue of law and its role in our democratic society. And in our conversation prior to uh, 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 this event, we shared those thoughts. And it's a privilege to share the stage now with the judge, a man who is committed to the law, committed to this city, committed to this country, who has given the largest part of his life to this cause and for which he is being honored today by this great organization. Judge, if you would please come forward to receive this award. It would be my privilege to give it to you. I'm grateful for the uh, generous words of introduction <clears throat> from a truly distinguished Bill Bratton. Uh, I, I hope I actually lived up to them. Uh, we're pretty bad at judging ourselves, uh, but I do know that Bill told me briefly before he spoke that he would actually be willing to say all of that under oath. <laughs> and I thank him for that. I, I thank the BGA uh, for this honor, and it, it is an honor. Uh, but I must say that much of that honor belongs not to me, but to those who investigate and present cases, and not just the criminal ones, the civil ones as well. Without first-rate investigators and lawyers, there will be no really good judgments in court. A good judge's understanding of the facts and knowing the law is primarily the product of those professionals. And I actually can see several of them sitting in the room right now. Um, crucial work of great and useful skill is their output. And often we never even know their names or give them credit for the work they do. My wife, who is here, oh, there you are. <coughs> um, has a legal and business career played out in a world of very high-stakes judgment calls. Uh, we never actually discussed each other's cases. It was our agreement uh, that we wouldn't do this when I became a judge, although this did not preclude her from an occasional compliment or a somewhat more frequent occasional and skeptical raised eyebrow at something I had done Seeing me on the bench, she once told me that she had sometimes wondered whether her exceptional rate of success was due to her own efforts or due to her good luck to have dealt mainly with good judges and smart executives. 
Uh, I can't answer for the executives, but I answered that much of the credit belonged to her, and I told her what I've just told you. It takes a while before a judge really comprehends his own level of dependency on good investigation and good briefs. I had a decent idea of the value of my work as a lawyer, as an investigator, and as a police chief. But I wondered, as my wife did, uh, whether there was some unseen magic uh, in the good judge that made things turn out well. Um, there isn't any such magic. It's the men and women who make the cases. It's they who give us what we need to see the light, which much of the time they see well before I do, and that light which guides us to the right decision. I'm grateful to be here today to declare this truth, particularly to the people here, and there are quite a number of them who do this work, and I have praised this work today. Thank you. Thank you.